uh, Sinoid here, uh, just working on uh, the wolf spider a bit. Some of you would have noticed um, there's a bit of a fly in the ointment with the uh, my choice of servos because I've got the servo mounted down on the axle and they're about 70 from the ground, 70 mils. So, and these are not waterproof servos, these uh, linear servos. So, that, that I can't go in any water deeper than 70 mil. So today we're going to try and waterproof one of these. It's going to be a bit of an experiment. Never done it before. So um, the theory being that I'll be able to go in the water a lot deeper, maybe 150 mil deep. But, and this can be submerged if these can't be submerged then this thing can't go into very deep mud or anything so today we're going to take this off this is the 50 to 1 reduction uh, taking this off it's not strong enough so I'll use a 100 to 1 or a 210 to 1 so this one here is going to be a sacrificial lamb and um, we're going to try a uh, waterproof in the internal electronics and um, dunk it in a jug of water and see if it works. It's the only way I can figure out how to test the theory. So we'll do that now. Okay so I've got the uh, linear servo out of the truck. Um, about to pull it to pieces. On this one here you can see some numbering on the side of the sticker there. It says L12, which is the model, 30 is 30 mil stroke, 50 is 50 to 1 reduction, S, uh, 6 is 6 volt. Uh, I don't know, it might, be, um, it might be signifying the plug, I'm not entirely sure. <coughs> right, before we crack it open, as soon as you do this, you're avoiding your warranties and things like that, so... Um, there's no crying, going back and crying to mama about it. Once you take it apart, it's all on your own back. So, um, this could be an $80 servo, or it could be an $80 paper weight. So, you know, the risk is mine, and I understand that. So, before you start putting your ele electronics apart, to you know, modify them or uh, waterproof them and all that sort of stuff. You know, just be aware that you're not going to be able to send it back to the shop, get a replacement. Okay, so we're inside. <clears throat> what we got is a little motor here, and this there's a little gearbox here, and that output shaft goes to the it's like a worm drive type shaft and uh, along the back here or along the top I guess it looks like it's on the video that is the circuit it's um, I was expecting a circuit board but it's not a circuit board it's a it's like a it's like acetate or a data ribbon or something like that uh, the circuits on there but it's not a solid board it's that flexible stuff uh, let's see if I can get this on camera a bit better. Here, yeah, see that there? It's kind of like a brown thing, and it's got the circuits in there. Space saving, I expect. So, we're going to gently pry this out. You, know, you, um, you don't want to bust it, breaking it apart. So, we'll try and get this out without. Because um, these things here will be. It's, Pretty delicate stuff, so we don't want to um, bust the uh, any of the connections. So it's steady as she goes, no sudden movements. Right, so we've got it out of the casing, so you can see a bit better there. You pull that out, you can see the circuit tree there. That's why I'm going to try and waterproof this stuff here, the little chip snap. Um, the motor being a brushed motor, theory being brushed motors will run in water. So, um, <clears throat> because of the nature of the design of these servos, I can't stop, um, I can't coat these 
outer casings in Plasti Dip or what have you and stop the water coming into this whole unit because it can travel through the shaft here. So you just slide this out here. See? See, it's got a thread. It's different to a um, screw, it's got a square edge rather than a tapered edge. There is a reason for doing that. I'm not going to get into it, but um, it's, it improves um, uh, some, um, force or less friction or something like that. There'll be something on YouTube. See these things here? We've got these little uh, spring loaded pieces of metal here. So um, you can see that moving up and down inside this shaft. It comes out, and there's a thread in here. <clears throat> so this gets turned and it pushes this armature in and out and it has those little uh, I'm not sure if we can see it in this light perhaps not inside here are some tracks on this this uh, electrical thin tape stuff it's got some wires running tracks running the length of the shaft here. I'm guessing it is some kind of feedback mechanism, feedback loop that tells the circuitry where this where the uh, armature is positioned. So we'll just put this back together. There she goes. If you've got to force it, something's not right, eh? Um, I'll suck that back in there. This bearing housing thing sits, there's a really tiny taper flat part here. Hard to see, but that goes at the bottom. She, she's real tight, man. I've got it as small as it can be. Uh, this here, I think, you got this shaft here, and it's got a, uh, I don't know what you call this kind of connection. It's like a flathead. And it goes into here. Now, um, it must be pressure engaged or something like that. I expect. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I don't want to dilly dally and muck around with this. I don't want to weaken this thing. What I'm going to do is put some conformal coating on here. And, um, as I say, the water will get into this unit, but the electronic circuitry in here will be protected, and hopefully that's enough to stop it from kicking its pants and exploding everywhere. It means that every time I take this truck in the water, I'm going to have to pull this apart, lube this, and lube that um, gear because I don't want it getting all crudded up and seized up because liquid will get in there. Uh, it's just to stop the electrics from frying. So I won't be taking this uh, truck swimming very often at all because I'm going to have to take it apart and clean this up mechanically. Um, but, you know, if I want to play in the water, I'll use an RC boat, not a truck. So I can't see it happening a great deal. So next is... Um, conformal coating was it's this stuff here. Yep, uh, that way around. Yeah, there you go. I thought I was in the back cave for a moment there. Um, I was put onto this stuff by uh, Codes Empire. Check his channel out here. He put me onto this stuff when I was, I was uh, watching his videos. So I'm going to give it a go, and we're going to see if it works on one of these servos. And um, yeah, it could be fun. It could be tears, but you know. Right, I'm going to coat it, and then we'll let it dry, and then we're going to dunk it.
um, coated it in a conformal coating. So um, the main area to cover is these little circuit chips here. So I, I'll probably give it more than one coat, most people do. It seems to be dry quite thin and um, that's what I need because this is such a small form factor type arrangement here. Space is at a premium. I'm going to let this dry uh, probably overnight to be fair. What I'm doing here purposely is I'm trying to I'm re-engaging that wee shaft into here to make this as close to its relaxed position when it's inside the plastic casing here. I'm not too sure how this conformal coating dries. Um, it might dry quite hard so um, I don't know how much flex will be in this little data ribbon stuff uh, when it hardens. So um, I'd rather it harden in the position it needs to be in to slip it back into the case than not. So um, this is it's an experiment. Could be an epic fail. Anyway, I won't film uh, the rest of the coatings, but uh, yeah, as I say, uh, do check out the uh, videos on Codes Empire. He he goes into it and shows the whole deal, runs his gear underwater and all that sort of thing. Uh, it's pretty good. So um, I'll do a few more coats um, on this, and then um, the ne when we get back to it, I'll just put it back in the um, case, and we'll stick it underwater and see if it explodes or not. Right, I so here it is. It's been coated. You might see it glistening a bit there. Yeah, you can see that in the light, eh? It's been coated three times, and. Um, all the circuitry here is, you can see it's got a glossy look to it. So it's all coated in the conformal coating. Um, when uh, with that stuff, you got to be careful because uh, it is high as a kite, man. The first time I uh, applied it, I didn't have the uh, window open, and boy, that's full on stuff. So be careful if you do use it, be careful with it because it's potent man. So we're going to put it back together now if we can gently squeeze all this back in. Let's have a look at what we're doing here. <laughs> got the uh, unit back together, the linear servo back together and I've got it plugged into a receiver in a little battery pack and that's hooked up to the transmitter so um, we know it's all working still. If you want to find out a wee bit more about these uh, uh, go and check out the uh, channel of um, J JRPRC. Uh, Judd has done um, channel here. J Judd has done. He's got some of these, and he's done some strength test videos uh, with these uh, hung weights and all those sorts of things. So, if you want to know how strong these are, you yeah, go and check out his channel and that. And yeah, he, he's got some of these as well, and uses them on the various bits, bobs. Anyway. We know it works, we've tested the theory. So the next part is to drop this into some water and see if this works. Okay, so I've got my handle here of water. I'm gonna drop this uh, linear servo into it and uh, this will be the moment of truth for us all actually. So let's see what goes on, eh? And she goes. Okay, so the next thing will be to see if we can apply juice to this and see if the um, arm retracts and extends. Would you look at that? Huh. Well, 
Well, I'm a believer. It bloody worked. Hmm. That's good stuff. I can't stop playing with it now. <laughs> Sweet man. And there it is in all its glory. So that's it man. I'm gonna chalk that up as a success. I'm happy. Happy as a pig and shit. It's better than wasting 80 bucks, eh? So, there you go, man. Like I said before, it's not ideal. You could see the bubbles coming in and out of here in the water. So water's getting inside of this unit. It, it's getting into the brush motor. It's getting into the little gear box thing it has going on here. And it's getting into this worm drive shaft here. Uh, the only thing I've actually protected from the water is the electronics um, circuitry. So, um, yeah, I, I will have to pop her open um, and lube that stuff. So, yeah, like I say, very, yeah, not the best, and I won't be taking the 8x8 in a lot of water and mud often or on purpose, you know. But if I see a muddy puddle, I'd like to be able to have a crack at it, you know. One of the things with the Fat Betty truck is that it, it isn't waterproofed at all, and, um, I can only go for quite shallow water on that, and I mean it's not a very capable truck, it's a 4x6, but I want to be able to do a wee bit more of the 8x8, so I did want these to be waterproofed at least. Um, yeah, good, real good. So uh, that's that, it's, it's been proved, so thanks to um, the guys who put me on to this stuff and I've put links to their channels here and on the video and you go and check them out and subscribe you know anyway um, yeah if you do decide to do something like this with your very expensive servos you have been warned about um, the warranties and you know those sort of voiding warranties and all that sort of thing and you know don't come crying to me if you botch it up because you watched this video, I'm, I'm not interested, you know. Take responsibility for your actions. And I wasn't going to go on and, and get in someone's grill because they said use this conformal coating. And if I tried it out on this and blew up the servo, I wasn't going to give them shit about it. It's, but it's all good, man. That's cool shit. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, guys. Cheers for watching, and I'm glad that. I've learnt something and I hope that you guys have learnt something from it too. And I'm real glad I didn't blow up my survey.